I'm back with another subdividing vacant land strategy video. You've been asking for more of these. Here they are. If you would subscribe to the channel, if you haven't already hit that like button, I appreciate you checking out the video today. Um, we're going to go over this simple strategy. This project returned about $220,000 on my investment. Got my investment back plus another 220,000. I don't find those kind of returns on most of the flips, any of the flips I'm doing as far as houses, other types of real estate. That's why I focus on vacant land. Maybe you want to add that to your portfolio. Maybe you want to add that to what you're doing out there. So this video is here to help you out. Probably don't cover it all, but I cover a lot of it. And I hope it, you find something in here that helps you out. If I miss something, which I'm sure I will, drop me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I appreciate you guys helping me out with the channel, liking the videos and subscribing. My approach basically on this one is to buy a larger piece of property. In this case, it's 5.3 acres and then repackage that into smaller tracks. Now, I always start with the ideal buyer who I'm who I'm marketing this, this property towards and then I repackage the lots around them. So in this particular one, I figured out who my ideal buyer was and then I repackaged the, the, the lots down for those prospective buyers, developed a marketing strategy around there. I'm gonna go over how I found this property. I'm gonna go over how I determined that this was a good target property for subdividing, a simple subdividing project like this. I'll go over some of the nuts and bolts too of like the administrative type of tasks that I had to cover and had to do to get to this end product here. Um, taking a bigger property down to smaller separate tracks. I'll cover some of the financials at the end of the video. I'll show you the actual surveys that I was working with uh, besides this drawing, which I know you love. So I put it up here for you. I worked really hard on it, but I actually put the professional surveys in there as well. So you can check those out towards uh, the end of the video or so. Um, and we'll do an on the ground tour of the property. I'll give you some you know, video coverage of the actual property that we're working with, some aerial shots so you can see what we're dealing with there. Let's get right, into let's cover it. how I found this property to begin with. And it basically goes back to what I'm looking for every day in my business is I'm looking for distressed properties. I'm looking for motivated sellers, for sale by owner, arbitrage opportunities where they're mispriced, maybe even on the MLS, mispriced properties. Um, I'm looking for seized properties, government seizures, uh, court ordered sales, I'm looking for tax foreclosures, pre foreclosures, uh, anything like that where I can buy something at a discount. And this in particular one was a tax foreclosure. And there was a notice in the newspaper about an auction that's coming up. And this was one of the properties that was on that auction. So went over there, bought it on the courthouse steps. And, um, I had one other, there was a couple bidders at the beginning, you know, when the price is low, I think the bidding on this one started out around $30,000. By the time it was all said and done, it was me and one other bidder, and I ended up winning the, the bid, the auction for $100,000. So I purchased this property, this 5.3 acres for $100,000, even at a tax foreclosure auction. And I knew it was a good property as a target for subdividing because the, the surrounding properties were all much smaller than, you know, 5.3 acres, which this one was, you know, the, the properties across the street are all, you know, quarter acre, half acre, under an acre lot. So, um, that's what was in the neighborhood. And this one was there. So I, I knew it was going to be a good property for subdividing. Um, I, I've done other deals in that area before, so I'm familiar with the market. I'm familiar with the potential buyers. In that 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 profile of that buyer in that area, um, I, I did another deal. Uh, one of the other subdividing videos I did was like one street over from this one, so I knew the area, I knew the market, I was pretty confident. I checked on the zoning, I I found out, and I kind of knew that that allowed already for what I wanted to do with it, subdividing, and, and my target buyer is people that want to live in RVs full time or part time, come down and be able to park their RV, live in their RV or build like barn dominium type property. So it's semi rural where they can do that sort of thing. Um, so I knew that the zoning was there and that's the kind of buyer that I'm, I'm targeting. Um, there's a lot of fishing. It's a coastal property, coastal area. So they can park their boats. They can live in their RVs. They can stay in the RV while they're fishing. Um, they can build barn dominium, you know, boat storage for their boats, offshore boats and things like that. 
So I kind of had my target buyer lined out. I knew this property would work for that. I did a rock and roll from there. I checked with the zoning, uh, zoning maps. I called the development departments, county development, city development. I called the utility departments as well. Because a lot of times the, the available utilities, as far as like sewer and water, will determine how the size of the lot will be after you want to do a, um, a subdividing type of project. So they just didn't have any sewer, they didn't have any water available from the city municipality. So I had to drill water wells and put in septic tanks if you're going to develop them. So that's why they're larger, you know, three quarters of an acre or so, still works for that. Um, and it all worked out. So I, I got my plan together, my my target buyer, and then I, I basically packaged the lots around that. And so did my research with all the zoning departments, building and development departments, uh, found out what utilities were available. In this case, basically what utilities were not available. I mean, it did have power lines, so that's a plus, which is pretty commonplace to have uh, power in my area. Uh, the water and, and septic, I had to, you know, advertised that, you know, city water and city septic were not available. So you'd have to do your own water well and septic tanks. So that's how I found it. That's how I determined they were good properties, good target properties for subdividing. And it's really worked out. Okay. Well from there. So taking it from one property to multiple smaller properties, let's go over the process and how that works and what I'm looking at when I'm looking at properties to potentially subdivide in this particular one. I'm always looking at the legal description, which is like when you read about a property, it's not like the 911 address or, you know, your pizza delivery address, it's not like 123 Main Street, Fort Worth, Texas. You know, that's not what I'm always looking at. What I'm always looking at is a legal description, you know, where it says lot one, block 17 of the Main Street addition to the town of Fort Worth in the county of Tarrant County, something like that. So that's the description that I'm looking at. <clears throat> and a lot of times what I'll see and where I'm able to do these, and they're more splits than subdividing, but what what I see, especially on the MLS, if you're looking for properties on the MLS, I'll find a piece of land and it'll have that 911 address, which is you know 123 Main Street. But if you look at the legal description, sometimes, and they're not you know all over the place, but this is what I'm looking for is, the legal description on that property may be lot seven, eight, and nine, Main Street Edition, town of, you know, city of Dallas, county of, you know, whatever. So that tells me that that one piece of property is actually three separate lots, you know, lot one, two, three. So that's what I'm looking at. And in this one, when I saw the legal description, it was all over the place. It was like lot one through seven, comma, lots nine through 12 comma lots 15 through you know and it, it totaled up to about 80 lots and they were super small lots they were like 25 foot by 100 foot lots and they were all over so this was you know some old subdivision from you know whenever this area had been originally platted some land company had divided it up at some point i didn't go that far back but you know it's way old school because the lots were super small compared to what they would be today and it was on the tax rolls, it was 5.3 acres, just one big piece of property. And when they were doing the auction, it was marked as gonna be 5.3 acres, but they had that legal description in there of all 80 lots. So I just went along, got a surveyor involved, had them survey out this whole piece. So in the reds, like the whole piece represents, I know you love this artwork, so I'm giving you another one. So the red was like the 5.3 acres. So then inside of that was all these little lots. So I just went along with the surveyor after they got me back the whole survey, which cost about 2000 bucks, I think. And so they gave me the big survey. And then I went in with a highlighter on what they gave me and I drew out seven lots. You know, and I, I basically, with my prospective buyer in mind, said how much room are they gonna need to you know, pull their RVs in there off the road and how much road frontage are they gonna want. So each one of these lots has about 75 to 80 feet of road frontage. And I'll show you the, the actual surveys broken up towards the end of the video where you can see all that. So I went in with a highlighter on that survey that they gave me and made it how I wanted, gave that back to the surveyor and then they went back in and individually surveyed each of these lots out where the blue lines are basically. 
These two on the end were a little bit wider and then there's five that were about the same size. And they're all about three quarters of an acre once they got subdivided out. I took those seven separate surveys. A couple weeks later, the surveyor got them back to me. I took those down to the county appraisal district where they had on their you know online accounts that you know it was 5.3 acres. I told them I wanted to split that property up. I gave them all the surveys. I told them I needed you know like the 911 addresses, the physical, like the 123 Main Street. A couple weeks later, they got me back all the addresses. I had all the individual surveys, and we we're basically ready to go to market from there. You know, so the first survey cost me a couple thousand bucks. I think the second survey cost me it was the seven individual ones it was a couple thousand bucks too. And that was about it, you know. So I got the property survey to see exactly what I was working with, and there I had it. So that was it, you know. After after a couple, that process probably took a couple months on these tax for on these tax foreclosure properties where I bought this one at on that auction. I had to wait about six months, and it's varies. We won't get into that on this video. I had to wait six months before I could really do anything with it, and then. Once I got the surveyor going, that was a couple months after that. So that's about the time frame I was working with, and we got it done. And from there, I've got seven properties ready to go. And here they are. They've all got road access. They can pull in off of there, and there you go. So that's what I was working with. That's kind of how I went. I know that's a, a big picture overview, but if you're looking to do something like this, those are the people that I would get involved and call, you know, the surveyor, and ask them, tell them what you're trying to do. If there's any development departments, call them and ask them. And keep in mind when you're calling these people, they may not be that familiar with it either. The surveyor has always been my go-to one. I don't know if it's just my surveyor is really knowledgeable about it. And I just stick with them, you know, and I've done multiple of these projects and they, they're on point, they know what they're doing and they're basically able to take it from there. They, they know the regulations, they know the lot sizes, they know what you can do, what you can't do and who you need to get approval from. So if you got a good surveyor in your area, I would get with them and you know just pick their brain. That kind of advice is normally free until they get out there and start doing their work. And if there's development departments or a tax appraisal district, I'll go ahead and get with them as well before you purchase the property, before you get in there and start doing anything major. Um, check with as many people as possible that might be over those. Okay, let's run the numbers. That's what everybody wants to know. How much did you make? How much did you lose? How much did it cost? What did you have to pay for? So let's go over all that. And this, and when, when I run the numbers, when you see the numbers, you're gonna see that that's why these deals can be so simple. Uh, they can be more complicated. So don't, don't get me wrong in that, you know, all subdividing land projects are simple. I look for the simple ones but they can be extremely complicated too. This one in particular was a simple one and I'm gonna go over the numbers with you. We talked about earlier that I bought the property at an auction for $100,000. One other bidder, I wanted 100,000 even. That's what I paid for the 5.3 acres. Um, and then we talked about expenses. And everything in this in this project basically had to happen before. It was all research and calling around, making sure that I could do the kind of project that I wanted to do and that it was all gonna be above board uh, as far as zoning, as far as regulations from the county, city, anybody involved had called utility departments. So everything was done before. And then the expenses, I was pretty confident and then I brought in the surveyor and they charged me about $2,000 for each round that they came out. I think one was like 1,600 and one was like a little bit over 2,000. But it's about $4,000 in survey work to get it broken up into seven lots. So there you go, $4,000, grand total. That's all I spent on, on, that's it. That's it, simple, one, one line item. If this was a house you were flipping, you'd have an Excel spreadsheet or uh, you know your accounting software would be pegged out top, you know, you have so many expenses and that was it to get it seven lots. Like I wanted, um, there is other expense, you know, like I cleared the land and made it look a little prettier and stuff like that. And some, which was maybe another $4,000 after the fact, but to get it from the red 5.3 acres to the blue seven separate tracks of land, that's what it took. I could go to market with that right there. The survey work that I had done, and all the running around research and my time and stuff like that. So $104,000, 
and expenses is what I'm going to say approximately. Each of these lots was about $50,000 a piece. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Uh, these were all the same size lots pretty much. These two on the end were just a little bit bigger and uh, I think we listed those around 60, 65 a piece. So five lots at 50,000 a piece, 49.9. Uh, it was 250, and then these two at 60, it was 120, so that's 370. So there you go, 370 is our list price. When we sold these, uh, 49.9, I think we took offers between 45 and 48,000. So there you go. These are just you know round numbers, easy math, simple, so you can get an ideal. Not exact science here, but pretty pretty darn close. So 370, uh, 264, there you go, 264, is that right, 266, overall profit, that doesn't include realtor fees, you know, title company fees, closing costs and stuff like that, we're pretty close, so from 100 to 260 more or less, you're looking at about, you know, 220% return. And that's what I did on this property, you know. Um, we've sold some of these. You'll see on this one, I did a development project where we did a RV pad and, you know, just ready for them to drive in there and park their RV. Now we talked about having the ideal buyer in mind, who you wanted to market these to and who you want to sell these to once you got them divided. And that's kind of the blueprint that I use for subdividing as far as how big I'm gonna make the lots, you know, who the end user is. And this one's developed as an RV pad, it's pending sale these two were purchased they've got an rv back here they've got an rv here so those are both rv pads this one here um they haven't done anything with it it's been sold but another rv you know in the contract they said they wanted to use it for rvs or mobile you know mobile homes rvs so same thing there and then talking to the realtor everybody that's been calling has been asking about rvs and barn dominiums as well on some of the bigger lots uh, they're looking at barn dominium type of developments so it kind of shows a proof of concept for this particular project and my method that I used by starting out thinking of who the end buyer was going to be and then using that to go ahead and divide them up. We'll do a, I'll show you the actual surveys here in the video and then we'll do a on the ground kind of look around the lot. You can get a you know feel for what it is. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Please hit the subscribe. I know I probably didn't cover everything here. If you have any questions about the numbers or anything like that, um, let me know. Any questions about how I find these properties, let me know, drop it in the comments. Happy to help if I can. I'm sure I didn't cover it all there. I just wanna give you a general overview of another subdividing project I did and uh, let's go check it out.